Father, we come before you this morning with grateful and thankful hearts. We thank you how you watched over us last night and we all slept and slumbered. And we thank you how you watched over us this weekend as we went about the highways and the byways. Father, we thank you. We take it not for granted. We thank you for the greatest gift that you could give to any of us which was your son, Jesus Christ, and through him we have access to come before you. So, Father, we thank you this morning. We welcome you into our service. Let every heart in here and every mind decrease so that the Spirit of the Lord can increase and we can hear what the Lord has for us this morning to say to his people. Father, once again, we're so grateful to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Amen. Bob, you want me to sing? You want me to lead the singing? If you don't care, let I just play music. That'll work. You'll work. What ones you got? Uh, we're going to do All Fly Away, Lily of the Valley, and Sweet By and By. I was actually going to suggest that, All Fly Away. If anybody be asking me. So, did you get to take care of this one? I want you to love singing. No, you don't want me to sing. <laughs> uh, what's the first one, Bobby? Page 233, off my way. 233? 233. Uh, I think it's 333. Is it in, which book is it, which book you got it? Uh, the new book's what I'm looking at. I think it's 333. Leslie changed it since I was a kid. <clears throat> 333 has always been off fly away. 333. 333. Yeah, I didn't have a lot on this. <laughs> I couldn't see. 
page 83. Another good one. <laughs>
but rather your response to those hardships. Any announcements? Baby bottles. I was going to say that. Guys, we have forgotten some baby bottles. Those are due uh, on Father's Day. Any other announcements? Remember Kathy, when she called her this morning, her blood pressure is high sky, so remember her. Of course, remember Minda and Rick and Jean. Mayor. And Bonnie. And Bonnie. D. Dot and Donda. Donda. Remember Alan and um, Kim made my arms feeling good this morning. My stomach bug. Any other special prayer requests? Remember the families of the fallen soldiers. I got to wear this shirt and this bracelet. Hey, this one's from a friend that I lost. This is for the 21 brothers that never came home with. Man. It's got to be a rough time for them. So remember them and pray for them. Anybody else? Let's prepare our hearts and minds. Father, in the name of Jesus, once again we come before our glorious God, who knows all things from the beginning to the end, who tells us, by way of his son, Jesus Christ, that we can come before his throne and cast our cares upon him. So we come right now, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. All things that are on our minds, things are weighing us down, things that we don't know the beginning to the end. We know a God that does. And so we come and we cast them at your feet, Lord, and we stand in total agreement to your will, that your will be done. We ask that you continue sending your grace upon the families that are taking care of those that are sick and afflicted, those that are going through these difficult times. We ask that you grace them, Father, in a very special way to do all that you have for them to do. Father, we thank you right now that we live in a nation, Lord, that sets under God, and we're calling upon you, Lord, to keep us that way. Keep those that you said your believers. Keep us in march to the true and living God that we stand in a nation and can stand boldly as a church all over, universal, and declare the truth of your word. We thank you, Lord, for those that have served with all their hearts and with all their bodies and, Father, gave up, gave up their lives, Lord, that we can live in a nation of freedom and liberty. Father, we ask that you right now comfort the families in this time of memorial seasons. Father, we thank you for it. Father, right now we ask a special blessing over the offering for the perfecting of the ministry, the edifying of the saints, so we can stand on the last day as your arms, as your heart, and show your love to those that are in need. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Spirit of the, the week in here, just sing along with you if you know, I'm sure you do. Oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, for purple mountains, majesty above thy fruited plain. Amen.
wilderness, America, America, God in thy every flaw, confirm thy soul in self-control, thy liberty in law. Oh, Seas beyond the years, thine alabaster cities gleam, and in by human tears, America, America, God shed His grace on thee, and crown thy good. From sea to shining sea. New Testament. Anybody? Anybody else? I just talk to you all. Say I'm thankful to be here. You know, especially in Afghanistan, running, running the mountains and whatever, the desert, you know, picking up body parts of, you know, the fallen and carrying them to their leaders and all that stuff. You know, if something comes over you, so when you come home, you feel guilty that you were able to come home. And then you want to go back with your brother. And you know, it's a long, dark journey road. But I thank him for giving me Hillary and Savannah to help me get through it. Amen. Which led me to you, God. I am very thankful for this church. Amen. Yes, you know. Go ahead, Chad. <clears throat> Good morning once again. Good morning. <clears throat> Any more testimonies or songs before we get started this morning? It is good to be in God's house this morning, and it's good to uh, have the desire to be in God's house. You know, um, a lot of people would love to be here and have a desire to be here, but they can't be here. So God's blessed us with the desire and the ability to be able to be here. So mm -hmm. thankful that um, you know, none, none of us, um, nobody ever comes to church without going, through, without pushing yourself through something to get here. Um, and we're thankful each and every time that, um, that you're able to push your way here and uh, tell Satan that not today, and you're going to want to uh, do God's will. So thankful for everybody that's able to be here. <clears throat> Please turn your Bibles to the book of Esther. Esther chapter 9. <clears throat> it's a busy weekend for a lot of people. And um, busy week. And we had uh, several services this week with the Vietnam moving wall. That was a wonderful service, the Flags of Honor, Navy Night, a lot of, a lot of things happening and blessed to be able to be a part of each and every one of those and um, the cemetery service today, looking forward to that. And um, all these are wonderful services to remind us of what is what this is all about. And thankful this morning that we live in the country that we do 
we're not without problems, obviously. We're not without our issues that we have to deal with. But you know what? <clears throat> I'd rather be here than any other country. There's a lot of communist nations out there that don't have the freedoms that we have, that don't have the, um, the things that happen, the things that people complain about today they wouldn't be able to do in another country. But they need to be thankful that they live in America where they can complain. <clears throat> So the book of Esther, chapter 9. We'll start reading at verse 24. The book of Esther is a wonderful book in the, in the Bible. It tells a wonderful story and, um, about Esther pushing her way through, through the enemy, through everything that she had to go through to be able to save God's people. And this is the next last chapter. So the story had already taken place, or the plot had already played out. Um, I'm sure if you know anything about the book of Esther, then you, you kind of know what it is. But there was a man by the name of Haman that tried to do his best to get rid of all of God's people. And Mordecai, Mordecai, however you want to say it, um, was the one that he hated more than anybody and he was one of God's children and he Mordecai was saved by Esther's um, plot if you will led by the Holy Spirit to be able to uh, eventually stop the elimination of God's people and at the end of this Haman was the one that ended up getting hung, if you will. So here in verse 12, I would encourage you to go back and read the whole, the whole book. We don't have time to go through all of that. That was just basically not, ever, not even a very good cliff notes of the, of the book, but that's the gist of it. But here in verse 24, it says, Because Haman, the son of Hamadatha, Hamadatha the Agagite, Agagite, I swore I was going. I was going to say those words. I said them a hundred times in my head, but when you say them out loud, it's a little bit different. The Agagite, the enemy of all the Jews, had devised against the Jews to destroy them, and had cast pure, that is, the lot, to consume them and destroy them. But when Esther became, when Esther came before the king, he commanded by letters that. His wicked device, which he devised against the Jews, should return upon his own head, and that he and his sons should be hanged on the gallows. Wherefore, they called these days Purim, after the name of Pure. Therefore, for all the words of this letter, and of that which they had seen concerning this matter, and which had come unto them. The Jews ordained and took upon them and upon their seed and upon all such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fail, that they would keep those these two days according to their writing and according to their appointed time every year, and that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation every family, every province, and every city, and that these days of Purim should not fail from among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their seed. As I said, this is Memorial Day weekend, and want to look at this morning just a little while about what a memorial is. Sister Robin mentioned it in Sunday school and very pointed that many people don't even understand what it is, what it's about. But we as a society have always held in high regard our fallen heroes. And I'm thankful for that. I'm thankful that 
they're never forgotten. But the problem is as time goes by, as most things do, we, we fail, we forget. We forget why and forget how, forget what happened. And that's why we place memorials. That's why we have memorials on certain things or about certain things. But that is why God allows us to have such weekends as we have this weekend. And as the scriptures tell us, they were to repeat this days of Purim, these two days, every year, so that they would not forget. Verse 27 says, The Jews ordained and took, the, took upon them and upon their seed, upon such as joined themselves unto them, so as it should not fail, that they would keep these two days according to their right and according to their appointed time every year. So what, do, what does memorials do? I looked up the word memorial in the Webster's Dictionary. And it said it was an event that would take place in memory of an, a, a specific event. In other words, what you would think it would be. We just set up a memorial. Um, you know, we oftentimes hear of uh, re reading the paper of uh, people that have or are going to have a memorial for somebody's at its past. Well, if you know anything about the funeral business, that probably means they were cremated and their cremated remains either will be there or won't be there, but they're there, they're coming together to remember that person. It's an event that's taking place in honor of that individual that's passed away. So we kind of understand what memorials are and we, we practice them every year. We practice them all the time. But... What do memorials do in our life? What, what, are they, what, what are they meant to do? What are they supposed to do? I want to look at a few things this morning that, that will help us to understand what memorial is all about. First off, a memorial reminds us that sacrifices must be made if freedom will continue. The sacrifices must be made if freedom will continue. You know, casualties are a part of every war. We know that it exists. We know that it happens, as Brother John said already this morning. Those that have fallen, those that, that didn't come back. We know that it happens. We know that it takes place, but so many people don't like to talk about it. They don't like to mention it. They don't want to talk about that part of war. I was watching yesterday a documentary yesterday, early yesterday morning, <clears throat> about Vietnam. And one of the footage that they had on there was from the Battle of La Drane. And they said it was the first major battle that the U.S. forces encountered in Vietnam, in North Vietnam. And it was, the, it was also not only the first major conflict or first major battle, it was the first major battle won by the U.S. soldiers. And as it showed this footage, you would think there would be people clapping, there would be people shouting, or be people being happy, a smile on their face. But when they said those words, and it just it drove like a nail in my brain, when they said those words, that it was the first major victory, because victory means something good. Victory is a good thing. But it said, it was the very first major victory in a major battle in North Vietnam, as they were saying those words, they were carrying dead U.S. soldiers on stretchers in a line. Black and white footage. And I thought to myself right then, it was the first major battle won. Yes, it was. But it did not come without a sacrifice. It didn't come without death. George Patton said these words, it is foolish and wrong to mourn the men who died. Imagine somebody saying that. It is foolish and wrong to, to mourn the men who died, but he goes on to say, rather, we should thank God that such men lived. 
You know, one thing about our fallen soldiers, and I've tried to, throughout my years, anybody that was ever struggling I, that with, with things that happened in their time of service is that we should thank God that such men exist in this life and women. In our country, we fail to remember that, and that was the biggest problem that our country had back in Vietnam. They wasn't welcome back. They wasn't open arms with people glad that they were here, glad that they came back safe. They were called baby killers. They were called, uh, they were called so many different things and so many bad things that, that they came back as though they were the enemy themselves. And yet, we were there to bring freedom to another country. Because here, here's the thing. If you know anything about war, it just continues to go on and continue to grow. So in other words, if we don't stop it over there, eventually it will be over here. That's what a lot of people don't understand. So what we have to remember is we thank God that there are such men and women live in this society that is willing to give all they have and even their lives. You know, spiritually speaking, our battles while we're here, if the victory, if we have victory in our spiritual battles, I promise you they will not come without some kind of sacrifice. We, as children of God, fight spiritual battles every day of our lives. We're not fighting. You know, I, I can't tell you the last time I was in a physical altercation with anybody. And I hope it, no, I hope it never happens again the rest of my life. The spiritual battles rage every single day that I live. And I know that if, if victory will happen in those spiritual battles, I must make sacrifices. You say, what kind of sacrifice do you make? Well, coming to the house of God is one of them. You say, well, it's not a sacrifice. Yes, it is. Everything that we do in the name of God is a sacrifice we give up. You know why? Because we're fighting everything out there. So anytime we do anything for God, Satan will give us ten things to do other than what God wants us to do. So many things in our life. The empty pews that we have here this morning, the, the, the things that we face every day. So many people, they wonder why they have turmoil in their Christian life. It's because they haven't sacrificed anything to get the victory. And folks, I'm the, I'm the biggest grace preacher there ever was. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about a peace of mind as a Christian. Thank God that we have grace. Thank God that I'm saved by the grace of God. But you know what? If I don't, if I don't make the correct sacrifice in my life, if I, don't, if I don't dig into the Word of God, if I don't come to the house of God to be taught, if I don't have a conversation with God throughout the day, then how can I expect to win any battle that's going to rage when Satan brings it up to me? You see, victories don't happen without a sacrifice. That's what a memorial does. It reminds us of that. Secondly, a memorial keeps those sacrifices fresh in our minds. You know, when God told him to, here in the text, to do this every year, the days of pure, you're going to take these two days every single year, and you're going to go back, and you're basically you're going to rehash what you had to go through and why these days exist. And I believe this is where we as Americans have failed on this point. We don't like to keep the, the sacrifice that were made fresh in our minds. But if I were to ask, what is Memorial Day? If I was to ask that question or even walk out on the street and just simply ask the question, what is Memorial Day? Just say, just say it exactly like that. 
there will be probably 10 different answers or more. And none of them, none of them probably be the right one. Inevitably, you're probably going to hear somebody this weekend or tomorrow walk up to you and say, Happy Memorial Day. There's nothing happy about this day. It wasn't meant to be a happy day. It was created to remember those that died in battle for our country. Happy Fourth of July? Absolutely. Happy Veterans Day? Absolutely. Those are to honor those that are living. Those are to honor the, the, the events that happened, the happy things that's going on in our country. This day was created so that we could remember that there were those men and women that literally gave their lives on the field of battle. There's nothing happy about that. On the other hand, when it was created, there was picnics. There was family gatherings there was these things that took place and it don't mean that we got to walk around with sad faces and tears in our eyes but we do these things in honor of those men and women that died we get together as families we have picnics we smile we laugh because we understand the sacrifice was made and we are enjoying that sacrifice. Therefore, we fail as Americans. We fail to remember that we fail to understand why Memorial Day was created. As in the scriptures, there was created so that there would be at least a day, at least a day in the Jewish calendar to remember what God had done. In our day, we have at least a day to remember our dead, those that died on the field of battle. <clears throat> we do like and enjoy the benefits of people's sacrifices that were made, that they made, but talking about the dark side of battles, of wars, is very uncomfortable. People don't like to talk about death in general. And yet without it, benefits won't come. If anybody understands that people don't like to talk about death, I can speak with authority on that one. I have some people that won't even walk in the funeral home when somebody dies. They won't even walk in the, they won't even walk in the doors. They'll send somebody else when their mom, their dad, their brothers, their sisters, their, their own children die. They will send somebody else to make the arrangements because they won't come in. You see, that's, that's human nature to not like these things or not talk about death. But as I said many times, I've lost, the people that I've lost that's been close to me, I would not, not want to have not, I would not have not wanted to know them just to not go through the pain of death. Does that make sense? Did that come out right? I hope it did. I'm glad I got to know them even though I lost them. You see, death is something that the world does not like to talk about. But you know what? To a child of God. The Bible says we do not die. Do you understand that? We don't die. We pass from this life to our home. The Bible calls it sleep. The Bible says that we, uh, have you not been ignorant, brethren, concerning those which sleep in Jesus? We, Paul tells the Thessalonians, look, we don't die. Don't act in this world as those that, the, as those that have no hope. We have a hope. We have an anticipation of what is on the other side. We have an anticipation of when death occurs in our life because we understand that without, without death, the benefits won't come.
That's what this holiday is to represent. Benefits come from sacrifices of those that die. Thirdly and finally this morning, memorials encourages us to live up to the sacrifices that were made. Memorials should cause us to recognize that these folks, men and women that died, died so that we could have freedom to make our own choices. You know, one thing that we've always enjoyed in this country, when it was formed and the principles were written down, we were able to pursue life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness in our Declaration of Independence. You know, real quick, I had a neighbor one time that was in Vietnam, and he came back, I've talked about him before, and he came back, he talked about the, the treatment that they got, and he talks about to this day, he will still talk about those things that happen in the world today that's not right. And he said, you know, the way that they treated us when we came back and the things they do now, he said, they don't understand that that's what we were fighting for. So that they would have the ability to do those things. Talk about biting the hand to feed you. You know, memorials should encourage us to live up to the sacrifices that we see that others have made for us. Let me give you an example. Sometimes doing the right thing is common sense, especially the children of God. I want to give you an example today. I want you something to think about. In World War II, Hitler did his best to annihilate the Jewish people. It's the same as Haman did in the text today. We as Americans, we as people, just people in general, the world, that's why they called it a world war. The world recognized what Hitler was doing and said, you know what, we're going to put a stop to this. Knowing what was happening, knowing what was taking place, I want you to think about this for a moment. Knowing what was going on in that time. Those gas furnaces would heat up and they would place those Jewish bodies, those Jewish people in their life and burn them, cremate them alive. Between 40 and 50 million people. It's unconscionable. It's hard to even think of that amount of people. It's hard to think of the hatred that one man had for a nation of people that they would do the things that they did to these people. If it wasn't the gas, if it wasn't the gas fired furnaces, it was the gas chamber. If it wasn't those, it was the rifle with the bullets. Whatever it took. Now, we as people should have we looked over in that country and said, you know what? It's the Germans' furnaces. They can do with them what they want. It's their own choice. How many would answer that way? How many would say, you know what? Whatever. If they want to do that, let them do it. They got a right to, they got a choice. They got a right to do what they want with their own furnaces, right? It's in their backyard, do, do with them what they want. Of course not. That's why 
we went over there with everything in us to put a stop to Hitler. Now, let me ask you this. What gives a woman the right to kill a baby? And we stand back and say, well, it's her choice. No, it's not her choice. It is God that placed that child in that womb. God, I'll say that again, it was God that placed that child in that womb. And we do not have the right to kill that child. And yet we stand back and say, well, it's her choice. America is going down the road of saying, you know what? If it's your choice, you want to kill that child, go ahead. You see the irony between those two stories? You see what America has, be has become to? We went from defending thousands, millions of people in another country and yet we will not protect our own citizens in our own country. Living right, folks, is sometimes just simple common sense. When I think back at when our country was formed, as I said, Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. I can't help but think that they would look at all that's going on today and think, what in the world? Why would this country that we're forming now, how did they get to that point? See, Satan has run amok so much in this country that it's hard to recognize the difference between right and wrong. It's hard to understand that it's hard to understand that the people that are making the decisions, if they would just stop and think for one moment, common sense tells us that these things are not right. Memorials. Let's go back to the text. Verse 28. And that these days should be remembered and kept throughout every generation, every family, every province, and every city. And that these days of Purim should not fail from the among the Jews, nor the memorial of them perish from their See, God said they will not forget. I do not want them to forget the victory, the sacrifice, everything that was done. I want you to, I want you to tell your children. I want your children to tell their children. Every generation needs to know why these days of Purim is taking place. Because they should be expected to live a certain way. You know, Paul says it best in Romans 6 1. Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? He says, God forbid. Why? In other words, here's the common sense. Why should the we that were dead in sin live any longer therein? Paul says, why, why would we want to live like the way we used to? Once you understand the sacrifice that Christ made on Calvary, I'm telling you, folks, when you get that, when you get that in your mind, you get that in your spirit, you get that in your heart, you will do everything you can. To please the God of heaven. And your life will reflect that. You see it's those Christians today. Those people that say they're one of God's. That go out and do live whatever. Well I'm under grace I can do whatever I want. 
You see, since I understand what grace is all about, I don't want to do whatever I want. I want to do what God wants me to do. And that does not keep me saved. But that keeps me in relationship with the Father. You see, memorial should make us want to live up to the sacrifices that were made. I think about our country. I think about the sacrifices of the men and women that died and the men and women that are laying their lives on the line even to this day, this moment. If it does not make, when I understand what they are doing it and how they're doing it, what they're doing it for, folks, if, as Americans, if that don't make me want to do right by them, then I truly don't understand what this is all about. We have, we have the greatest example ever in our country. In this world. You see Jesus. When he went to the cross. He didn't have to go. But he went because he loved us. And if that don't make us. Me as a child of God. If that doesn't make you as a child of God. Want to live. The best life you can for him. Then you just don't get it. You just don't understand. Memorial Day. Sacrifices must be made. Memorials are kept to keep it fresh in our minds. And allows us and lets us understand to live up to the sacrifice that's made for us. If we go through this holiday, if we go through this place, this this the parade, whatever, however you celebrate Memorial Day. Don't say happy Memorial Day. There's nothing happy about it. But enjoy the day. Enjoy the sacrifices that were made so that we could have the things that we have. And as a child of God, trust me, the best life you can live is life for God. I've often said, if, 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 I, if this was totally wrong, if, this, if, if everything in this is, turns out to be all wrong, there's still nothing I would change about the way I live for God. Because it's the best life anybody could ever live. We know that it's not wrong. We know that this is right. But the point I'm making is, you know what? If a man died for me, laid his life down for me, my loyalty is to him, not to this world. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, as we come, to buy, come before you this day, we thank you, our Father, for watching over and keeping us. We thank you, God, for the country that we live in. As imperfect as it is, the problems that we have, the problems that exist, the problems that we're going to face in the near future, we just pray, Father, that you'd help each and every child of God to understand and to pray for our country. Do our part in the world today. When it comes to common sense things, God, like the choice. God, I pray that we'll stand strong. I pray that you'll give us the fortitude, God, to stand upon your word and never back down. Whether it makes a difference in our Congress or whether it doesn't make a difference, God, but they will look at the children of God, at your people, and say, you know what? They didn't budge. And they didn't give in. I pray, God, that that will be us. I pray, Father, that you'd give us that strength when it all comes crashing down, that we will stand strong in you and in your word. God, as we go through this Memorial Day uh, holiday, Lord, help us, God, to remember our fallen soldiers, fallen men and women that gave the ultimate sacrifice, and 
help us, Father, to have what we have today. We thank you so much, God, for allowing us to be here today. Help us, God, to make it through each and everything that you want us to do. God, help us to give the strength, the ability, and the desire to do your will in our life. And it's in your Son. Wonderful name we pray and we ask these things. And amen. amen. So I'll stand this morning. Y'all are interested in the Memorial or the yeah, Memorial Day ceremony at Woodland Cemetery is two o'clock today. Come out and be with us. Pray to ten o'clock in the morning. And um, that's always a lot of fun. Ain't, ain't supposed to be too hot this year, so that's a good thing. Hopefully the rain holds off. All right, nothing. Anybody have any other announcements? Clash of the Gods on Wednesday. We're finishing up. How many more we got, you think? Oh, maybe about a couple more weeks. Okay, a couple goes. more weeks. I'm telling you, this was great, and I'm looking forward to seeing how this ends, but I'm telling you, the next one, mm. change your whole life. I promise you. Grace Awakening. Promise you, it, it changed my life. I can tell you that. You want to know why I preach grace the way I do? Not it's because of this. I mean, it's mainly because of this. But because of this, this book, Grace Awakening, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. it changed my whole my whole world. Everything about what I thought. I tell you, it's the it's it's awesome. You know me. I don't use that word lightly. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. All right, come out and be with us. Anything else? All right, Brother Bob, will you care to dismiss some word of prayer, please? Heavenly Father, and our blessed Savior, 